looking to pull off another stunning victory against a Pac-10 team. The Seattle University Red Hawks have made their way to Bank of America Arena, looking to knock off the Washington Huskies, who are certainly happy to be back home after the disappointing trip this past weekend into Los Angeles. And the Huskies looking for their 13th win of the season as the Red Hawks try to move within a game of 500. Lorenzo Romar in his eighth season as head coach of the Washington Huskies, facing one of his former assistants in Cameron Dollar. They go way back to when Romar recruited Cameron out of high school to play point at UCLA. Along with Francis Williams, I'm Tom Glasgow. Nice to have you with us. We look forward to this contest. Washington again playing without one of its key weapons in Isaiah Thomas. So it will be interesting. But that coaching matchup certainly is the primary storyline. Yeah, without question. I mean, these two guys, as you just mentioned, they go way back and they know each other very well. And you'll see two teams that actually mirror each other in style because of the, uh, you know, the commonality that these guys have with their coaching. He came oh so close to being a Washington Husky, but Chuck Garcia is the leader of Seattle University. The Red Hawks leading score at more than 20 per game, a special talent. He is a special talent, really was the surprise player in the country the first six weeks of the season. Kind of leveled off a little bit as people have got him on their scouting reports, but his talent remains the same. 20 points, nine rebounds a game, gets to the free throw line about 12 times a game. And as you mentioned, a very special talent with a very bright future. Of course, Quincy Pondexter, when you talk about special, may have his hands, but we'll see how the matchup is tonight. Will Quincy get a shot at number 22? As you can see, the Red Hawks wearing throwback uniforms to the late 1950s. Quincy Pondexter had a rough outing his last time out. Francis just two points in that loss at USC. But if we know anything about this young man, he is resilient and he's very capable of bouncing back in a very big way. Well, I think he will respond tonight. I mean, one for 10 on Sunday or Saturday against USC. And I really think he just had a hangover from that last second loss at UCLA. But he's had a great season. Three time Pac-10 player of the week. One of the leading candidates for Pac-10 player of the year. And it's up to him to lead this Husky team because he's the lone senior and they look to him to lead the way. Now Francis he's interesting because one of the things I like about him is he doesn't force the issue. He really wants to get his teammates involved but that can be a fine line. There are times when you want him to take that ball, demand that ball and put that team on his back. Well there's a balance that you're looking for there as you mentioned and there have been times this season where he has done that. He tried to do that Saturday night. He was not able to do it. So the balance that they're looking for. We've talked about a third score but uh, again an opportunity in this game to get some of that fixed. Both of these teams have shown inconsistency throughout the season, but over the next 40 minutes tonight, they will do everything they can to get back on top. Let's take a look at our oh boy Oberto beef jerky starting at lineups and as you take a look at the Washington Huskies it is Benoit Overton replacing Isaiah Thomas who is out tonight with the stomach flu Charles Garcia number 22 will lead the way for Seattle University in those throwback uniforms Tyrese Brashears Garcia to jump center and Cervante Burrell with the basketball the point guard for Seattle University. Great to have you with us here from Bank of America Arena and right out of the gate a quick foul and that goes against number 31 Gavin Gilmore a 6 8 senior out of Pasco High School. Well Seattle U as we mentioned they come into this game with a lot of confidence because of the success they had against Oregon State and some other wins they've gotten on the road and it's important for Washington to establish with them right away that they're the superior team otherwise Washington could be in for a long night on Texter with an open look and Quincy knocks it down Quincy Pondexter gives Washington the initial lead 30 seconds into this contest Benoit Overton with that harassing defense on 
Cervante Burrell over to Garcia, guarded by another 22 and Justin Holiday. Garcia at 6'9", can handle the ball as well as many point guards in the nation. Mike Barchley with the pass to Burrell, a little strong on the shot and the rebound by Pondexter. And Quincy on the push, ball deflected, and the steal by Seattle U. Bounce pass by Gilmore, deflecting out of bounds, and it'll be Seattle University basketball. Pondex will gain a little, little confidence here, getting the ball against his own right there at the, at the free throw line and knocks down that shot. He didn't get a, a clean look like that at the basket the entire 40 minutes on Saturday night, so that's a, make him feel a little bit better. And Francis, not a surprise, but Seattle U comes out in his own the way the Huskies struggled against that in L.A. No, not, not with all. They don't have the, the athletes to try to play them man for man. And if you've watched the Huskies play, they've struggled against his own all season long. Aaron Broussard, number four, with the miss inside. Garcia launching. Gaddy with the rebound. Fast break for the Huskies. And Overton with the finish. Nice pass by Pondexter. And an early 4 0 lead. And an early timeout by Cameron Dollar, who wants to make sure that the Huskies don't build early momentum here in this matchup. And the long shot leads to the long rebound. The good thing about that play was Abdul Gaddy passed the basketball ahead. I think that's something that they need to look for when they have those opportunities. So a nice job by Gaddy to pass it ahead to keep the fast break moving and a good job by Pondexter to find Overton. Seattle University starting slowly from the floor, missing its first four shots. The Huskies have made their first two, and that's part of the reason that Cameron Dollar was prompted to take the early timeout. Try to keep this Husky crowd out of it a little bit early on. Early on, and obviously, when you have uh, these campuses just four miles apart, you're going to have a good contingent from Seattle University cheering on the Red Hawks tonight. That just adds to the electricity here in the building. Yeah, there there may not be two campuses in the country that are as close to each other as these two schools are. I mean, they're four or five miles at the most. 25th meeting between the two teams. Huskies with an all-time lead in the series of 20 to 4. Burrell in trouble, stripped by Gaddy. And that duel heads the other way, draws contact, and he will head to the line. Cervante Burrell with his first personal foul. So Washington, as they do here in this building, they turn up the defensive intensity, keep Burrell out of the lane, create the turnover, and Abdul Gaddy with a chance for the breakaway layup. Gaddy, the 6'3 freshman, McDonald's All-American out of Bellman Prep in Tacoma. Shoots nearly 54% at the line. Really start, started to see Francis, his game develop over recent weeks, becoming a more confident player. Well, he's 18 today. Yeah. So Youngest the, player the, in the, expectations, the expectations <laughs> just go way up now. He's, he's officially he's a 18. man. He's a grown man now. One out of two at the line, 5 nothing. Husky lead. Garcia. You can see the ability off the dribble with that size to go to the rack. Yeah, he has some, he has a, a unique skill set for a guy his size, and sometimes he does have a tendency to be on the perimeter a little bit too much. But he is skilled to the point that he can play out there. I mean, we've seen him get the ball off on the off the get a rebound, take it on the break himself, pull up for a jumper, or make the right decision, or finish at the rim. Uh, he definitely is a talented young man. Guy that spends a lot of time at the free throw line, taking more free throws in the country than anybody by far. So what is your favorite Northwest rivalry? Well, the fan polls question so far, it is a landslide in favor of the Cougars and the Huskies, 61%. The problem with Garcia at the foul line, he doesn't take advantage of all those opportunities. He's He's solid, but he could certainly improve hitting just 60% at the strike. Right, yeah, he's uh, he's had a problem at the foul line all season long, and he shot 50-plus more free throws than the closest guy to him in the country. Alley you Holiday with the flush from Gaddy. Perfectly executed play by the Huskies, who jumped out to a 7-0 lead. Burrell inside draws contact, can't finish. And the foul will go against one of the Huskies inside. Tyrese Brashears, the redshirt freshman out of Los Angeles. Pretty play on that lob by Gaddy, an excellent pass. Well, a play that they typically run for Quincy Pondexter. They bring Pondexter to the high post and let Holiday slide behind the zone for the, the alley-oop pass. 
Substitution for the Huskies as Brashears checks out. Matthew Bryan Amini checking in. Well guarded by Gaddy. Gets by and pull up over Pondexter and the Red Hawks still shut out here at Bank of America. Gaddy pushing the front court. Trailing on the play, Pondexter the open look for three. And that's just poor defense really by Seattle University not to know where Quincy Pondexter yeah, is. You have to know where he is and, and understand that when he gets the ball, he's going he's gonna to pull the trigger. 10-0 Huskies, Pondexter with five points. Loose ball, Overton, and in transition, here come the Huskies, and there goes Pondexter. Seven points for Quincy Pondexter, and another Seattle University timeout with the dogs off and running to a 12-0 lead. Boy, talk about two different teams, the Washington Huskies at home versus the Washington Huskies on the road. It is night and day. And Quincy Pondexter, who had just two points in the last game at USC, is on fire early in this one. Well, that's paying attention to detail or not paying attention to detail. As you know that in the scouting report, Coach Dollar let them know that you have to know where he is at all times. But the opportunity to get out on the break and, and get the slam dunk just adds to the confidence that he got earlier from the free throw line jump shot. Then he knocked down the three. And right now, after you said a two-point performance on Saturday night, he jumps out here with a quick seven. Three for three from the floor. The Huskies five for five as a team. And you can see Quincy, streaky Quincy at Arizona and ASU had a rough go, but at home he was lights out and, and one for 10 against the Trojans on Saturday. In the Stanford and Cal game, he actually had a good game. The, the first road game in UCLA, he, yeah. had, he had a nice game statistically, but uh, he has had his struggles on the road. Number 21, Chris Gweth with the ball. He's checked in to the lineup. Same story for number 12, Taylor Olson for the Red Hawks. That's Garrett Lever losing the basketball, so significant substitutions for Cameron Dollar and a foul in backcourt. I thought that might go against Seattle U. In fact, it'll go against Washington. Well, Seattle U brings Lever in to uh, replace Burrell, who was not handling the job at the point. Chris Gweth comes in, who's really a six starter on this team. He starts and comes off the bench, one of their leading scorers. And Taylor Olson, a senior out of Blanchett High School, he's a senior. Give him an opportunity to play in this atmosphere. Yeah, Gweth going up strong right there, second leading scorer on the team at just over 12 per game. But the Red Hawks still cannot put the ball in the hoop. And the foul going against Seattle University, third team foul. Alex Jones, who's checked in, picking up that foul. So with the exception of number 44, Mike Boxley, all reserves on the court right now for Cameron Dollar. Huskies looking to build on their 12-0 lead. Scott Suggs with the ball, getting in for his first action. And you wouldn't expect Seattle U to come in and be overwhelmed by the by this crowd, but but obviously they were at the very beginning, and then the Husky defense had a lot to do with it. Well, as in this building, their defense can just be suffocating at times. Daddy for two, no good. Nice block out by Boxley as he goes to Garrett Lever. Worth trailing on the play. Nice fake. Pull up from about eight feet. Strong. Overton with the rebound. Out to Suggs. Numbers for the Huskies. Overton will reset things. Daddy. Open three, second made three-pointer this season for Abdul Gaddy, who came in connecting on just one of 16 from beyond the arc. So a good early indicator and an offensive foul. Looks like that goes against Alex Jones picking up the foul. That is four. A perfect start for the Washington Huskies off to a 15 to nothing lead on their crosstown rivals. College Hoops on FSN is presented by Obutto Beef Jerky. Don't be a sidekick, eat like an alpha. By Sterling Savings Bank, now more than ever. And by Emerald Queen Hotel and Casino, the entertainment capital 
of the Northwest. Let's go courtside, say hello to Jen Mueller with a little info on these throwback jerseys being worn tonight by Seattle U, Jen. Well, I think I finally got it figured out. You know, they're wearing the numbers of some Seattle U greats to honor the history there. And Coach Cameron Dollar said when he told the team about them that their jaws hit the floor, they were awestruck and so honored to be able to do that. No history lesson needed, by the way. They know everything because most of these guys are at practice, guys. All right, Jen. Well, we had an early question answered regarding the absence of Isaiah Thomas and how the Huskies would respond as Pondexter is stripped, going the other way and drawing contact. Cervante Burrell, and he will head to the line. 15 nothing a lead to start this game. As you look at the numbers being worn here tonight by the current Seattle U players honoring these legends of the past and some great names on there. One of my favorites, Rod Durline, the rifle, who went on to play uh, for the Supersonics, and the list goes on. A very rich history. And of course, for Seattle University, their first season playing a full Division I schedule since 1980. So they are back in the big time and trying to build something special again. Yeah, they really are. And some of those guys are here in the building tonight. I know I saw Carl Irvin earlier. Uh, he's sitting courtside with Kevin Souter. His name's not on that list, but they were teammates back in the late 70s, uh, early 80s. But a lot of those guys are, are here in the building tonight. Austin Turner for a three, an 18 to nothing Husky lead. There's a tradition here at Bank of America Arena. The fans stay on their feet until the opponents score. And now they can sit down as Burrell gets to the rack. Gives Seattle University its first two points tonight. Well, five and a half minutes before they get their first bucket. And uh, you give Washington's defense credit for that. But uh, Seattle, you were a little, little overwhelmed also with this environment. Von Dexter cleaning up the mess off the Overton miss. And what a fast start for Quincy Von Dexter already. Nine points and four rebounds and a 20 to 2 Washington lead. Well guarded by Overton. Spinning out of the double team. That's Chris Gweff. Outstanding sixth man. One shot by Jones, no good. Ron Dexter with rebound number five. They have a double double before the half is over. Inside, Brian Ameny. Sucks in the corner and is fouled by Chris Gweff. That'll be the 15th foul against Seattle University. Well, Quincy Pondexter on the offensive end is always perpetual motion. Overton on the drive on the baseline comes up a little short, but there's Pondexter for the tip. And he's uh, made a living in, during his four years here at Washington of being one of the best offensive rebounders in the Pac-10. And uh, he exhibits that with that play right there. Quincy will get his first break. Justin Holliday, Elston Turner, Brian Amening, Suggs, and Overton comprising the Husky lineup. Charles Garcia has returned for Seattle U. Number 22. Suggs for three. Back rims it. Holiday with a rebound. A new clock for the Huskies. And anytime you play the zone, of course, the weak side rebounding is always going to be an issue. And the Huskies, the way they pound the glass, and this is a smaller Seattle U team, uh, that's going to be a problem for Seattle U all night. Foul called on Chris Gweff, his second 16 foul. Huskies with 14 fouls. Pac-10 basketball returns Thursday on FSN. Doubleheader action begins from Corvallis as the Tarver brothers lead Oregon State against Dwight Lewis at USC. Then it's Tawan Porter and the Ducks taking on the resurgent UCLA Bruins. Coverage tips off at 5 p.m. on FSN and FSN HD. Holiday will try to get the split at the line where he shoots just over 81% and does. Justin, a junior out of Chatsworth uh, in Los Angeles, Chatsworth, California, that is, averaging just over four points per game. For Shears, his return for the Huskies as Brian Amening checks out. And again, here you have this 6'10 point forward bringing the ball up court for Seattle University. And Holiday comes up with the steal. Yeah, Garcia little, let that dribble get yeah, a little too far away from real, his body. Real loose with it. For Shears inside. No good. Lever with it. 
some ball handling trouble right there. Broussard with an open look for a three. No good. Turner with the ball for the Huskies. Holiday. Last court pass to Turner. Holiday with the fake and a good one. From 15 feet, knocks it down. Justin Holiday. Not a great shooter, but was in rhythm on that shot. Holiday with five points and a blocking foul that Husky fans aren't buying, but that's the call. That will go against Holiday. Well, you see against this against this zone, one thing Washington is doing a really good job of tonight. That's the same spot that Gaddy got the three from earlier. Just good ball movement of, sw of swinging the ball from, from side to side and making the defense defend them instead of just getting the ball on one side of the floor, taking the first quick available shot. And they've really done a nice job here early of working against the zone, which benefits them because they're going to see and have seen a lot of zone to this point in the season, and they need to work against it. Take a look at those first 16 possessions for Seattle University. It has been an incredible struggle for the Red Hawks. Benoit Overton checking out. Gaddy returning. Peter Harris, number 24, has checked in for Seattle University as Lever takes a seat on the bench. Broussard to inbound. 23 to 2, the Huskies in front. And Olsen. Not on the same page that time with Gavin Gilmore. And he could have taken one dribble to the baseline, Olsen, and given himself a better angle to make that entry pass to the post. Seven turnovers against the Red Hawks. Suggs, no good. Brashears follow, no good. Garcia fouled by Brashears. Second foul on Brashears. That is the sixth team foul against the Huskies. Both teams now with 16 fouls. Darnell Gant checking in for the Huskies. And it's Holiday checking out. A little confusion. Brashears thought he was headed to the bench, but he'll remain in the game as Darnell Gant gets to see his first action. Garcia guarded by Gant. Sophomore out of Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles. Any time on the shot clock. Garcia drawing contact. That'll be the seventh team foul against the Huskies. The first against Gant. With a timeout taken. We come back. Charles Garcia back at the line. Wow. What a start for the Huskies and that man. Quincy Pondex with the dogs up by 21. Welcome back to the Bank of America Arena. The Huskies out to a 23 to 2 lead against Seattle University. One of the big storylines in this game is Coach Cameron Dollar facing his former mentor in Lorenzo Romark. They coached together here at the UW for seven years and three years prior to that at St. Louis. So these guys have been joined at the hip for the last 10 years, which Lorenzo Romark said earlier in this week does give Cameron some kind of an advantage when it comes to personnel because he knows Coach Lorenzo Romark so well. At the same time, Coach says it's going to be fun to see Cameron in a head coaching position for the first time because he's wanted this since he was Four guys. All right, Jen, Charles Garcia at the line. Looking for his first point tonight. He's yeah. wanted to be a head coach since he was four. <laughs> really? I'm telling you. That's you know, usually <laughs> here's how it works. Usually you want to be that star athlete first, <laughs> and then when that time runs out, then you start thinking about coaching. But he knew coaching, still went on to be a tremendous athlete, obviously. That's a good one. I'm Cameron Dollar and I want to be a college head coach <laughs> and I'm four. <laughs> he obviously had a pretty good idea where salaries would be in the future. Yeah, yeah. Well his dad was a coach so he was following in his dad's footsteps. Turner in the corner three more for the Huskies 26 to three Washington in front as Elston Turner has made both three point shots he's attempted. Total domination by the Huskies. Garcia. Nice smooth stroke but can't connect. And Sugg saves the ball from going out of bounds. Tied up by Bruce Sard. Alternating possession 
will give the ball to Washington. There's an example for Scott Suggs. He's got to get in the weight room. He didn't have the strength to yeah. pull that ball away from Bassard to prevent that tie up, even though Washington's going to keep possession of the ball. But uh, they, they'll be able to use that to let him know. And, and not saying that he hasn't, but he needs to continue to get in there because he's kind of slight. Abdul Gaddy, Elston Turner, Scott Suggs, Matthew Bryan Amity, Quincy Pondexter on the floor for the Huskies. Nice find by Gaddy. Pondexter for three more. And he's into double figures now with 12 points. And the Husky lead at 29 to 3. And a steal in transition. Gaddy blocked by Burrell. And the foul called is Abdul Gaddy will head to the line. Well, another, really? another turnover there by Washington with the quick hands by Abdul Gaddy. But Gaddy's, Gaddy's able to get into the teeth of the zone. Find Pondexter on the wing from that same spot again where they've been knocking down shots over in that left left side of the floor all night. All right, here's here's the toughest question I'm probably going to have for you tonight. Why can this team play this way at home and they can't play anything really close to it on the road? Well, two things are going on here tonight. Uh, unfortunately, an inferior opponent. And uh, number two, they, they always just feed off the energy that this crowd and this atmosphere brings. And, that's the growth that they're going to have to find the ways to have the focus, the concentration, the attention to detail, the energy and the effort that you have to have to win on the road. And they haven't been able to find that. And I think it's all a part of the maturation process that this team has to go through only having one senior. Well, you look at those numbers, and they're really dramatic. The Huskies at home win by an average, outscore their opponents by an average of 16 points. But on the road, they're outscored by nearly 13. I mean, you're talking about a. 29 point differential. Mm -hmm. Turnover by Gaddy and members for Seattle U. Burrell with the lay in. And Seattle U gets a jailbreak fast break. They're able to convert, cut it to 25. From, but from the Washington perspective, I mean, it's great that they're knocking down shots and, and it's going to allow them to build some confidence. But this is the way they shot the ball in the first half against UCLA. And what I was just getting ready to say, I still need to see that ball go inside yeah. because they cannot live and die by these outside shots that are going down right now because they shot the ball well against UCLA in the first half. They scored 41 points. In the second half, they only scored 20 because those jump shots in the first half, that's fool's goal. And the ball has to go inside from time to time to keep the defense honest and to continue to try to establish a low post presence. Well, it's going to be interesting to see if Lorenzo Romar uh, with this game where it is his club up by 25 is is going to insist that we get that ball into the paint and let's get those bigs involved and get some rhythm going with them so when the Cougars roll in here on Saturday they're feeling good about their game. Yeah because it won't be this easy against the Cougars and let's just say because of the home court advantage they come in and they play a great game because they are at home which they've typically done but they still got to prepare for the trip they still have to make to the Bay Area and, and the trip they have to make to the Oregons. Offensive foul against Chuck Garcia. Another turnover for Seattle University. That's 10. Huskies with four. And the Dogs up by 27 points as we're inside the 10 minute mark here in the first half at Bank of America Arena. The University started the game and remains in the 2-3 zone. Nice find inside by Pondexter. Brian Amining unable to finish. He's come up with a loose ball. Holiday. Athleticism followed by Pondexter. And Quincy comes up with the ball and called for the charge. Into Taylor Olson. We well, saw some nice work inside by the Huskies getting second and third opportunities even though they couldn't finish it off. Like the ball movement, but the pass from Pondexter to Brian Amity, he's got to take that ball to the basket strong. He doesn't need to bring that to the other side. Go ahead and absorb the contact and take the foul and try to play through it and then go to the line. But coming to the other side with the reverse, not necessary. You got to have, when you have opportunities to get fouled, go ahead and get fouled. Don't avoid the foul. And that's kind of been his problem all season long. Well, over to Taylor Olson. There's a matchup we've been looking for with Pondas to Garden Garcia. And a timeout taken by Cameron Dollar with exactly nine minutes 
left here in the first half. Cervante Burrell with four points, and the uh, rest of the Red Hawk team obviously with just one, and that one point provided by Chuck Garcia. Get a look at him. We talked uh, off the top. Plenty of NBA scouts expected here tonight. He has been followed closely. And if you're at home, may say, well, you know, what are they looking for out of him right now with his team down by 27 points? Are they looking at attitude? Are they looking to see if he tries to take this thing over? Are they looking to see if he stays within the team concept? My guess is it's all of the above. All of that, all of that. And you have to understand when you, when you have a guy like that, I kind of compared maybe to Rodney Stuckey when he was at Eastern Washington. He was at Eastern. They didn't have a lot of success. They didn't win. Well, how come they're not winning if he's so good? But you have to look at a guy like that and think about, okay, if we put him on the floor with four other guys that are as good as him or maybe better, then how good is it going to make him? So those, that's another factor that you have to look at when you have a guy playing in a situation like this. It's just not all about what he does tonight. And, you know, we talked about that 51-point win the Red Hawks had at Oregon State. Charles Garcia was a non-factor in that game right. due to foul trouble. I mean, it was really the rest of his teammates that dismantled the Beavers that night. Botchley with the point, with the bucket. Red Hawks off the turnover, looking for more. And that time it was Taylor Olson going too deep on his penetration, drawing the offensive foul. And that's not what Taylor Olson does. He'd have been better served. Good shot fake going to the basket. But he had Boxley spotted up in the corner. He could have passed it to Boxley and let him knock that down. First foul on Olsen. Ten team fouls against the Red Hawks. Returning to the Seattle University lineup, Gavin Gilmore, number 31. On Dexter out high. Missed just one shot. Holiday coming up short. Burrell with the rebound for Seattle U. Good ball. Wide open in the Seattle corner. U. Yeah, Lever with the open look. No good. Rebound. Three on two break. The alley oop. Holiday. Wow, what a finish. Not a perfect pass from Overton. But it doesn't matter when you have athleticism like that. Terrific play by Holiday. Yeah, and as you said, the superior athleticism, Holiday at 6'5, 6'6. Burrell back on defense for Seattle U at maybe 5'9. No chance. Seven points for Holiday, a 34 to 7 Washington lead. It has been all Huskies. Overton. Well, it's nice to be long on a play like that, isn't it? Justin Holiday with a pretty play. And the Dogs with some gorgeous basketball here tonight. 7.38 left in the first half at Edmondson Pavilion. A game dominated by the Washington Huskies. The first matchup between Lorenzo Romar and Cameron Dollar since Dollar left this Husky coaching staff last spring. However, the second time they have gone head to head as coaches, Back in the late 90s, 99-98 season, Lorenzo Romar, head coach at Pepperdine. Cameron Dollar, at age 22, the head coach at Southern California College. Pepperdine winning that game, 94 to 64. Well, Cameron was So this there. one's not going yeah. too well either, yeah, is my yeah, point. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a repeat of history here, but. Uh, I think you know, Cameron and, was on, on the job there for just one year. Just for the one yeah. season, exactly. That's where I was going. But you know, as we said, they've been joined at the hip for for a long time, know each other very well, have the utmost respect for each other. And I think to some extent, uh, this Washington team misses Cameron Dollar in, in, in some respects. I just think his personality and the and the relationship that he had a lot of with a lot of these guys that he recruited and has helped mold. He was their guard guy, he was their defense defensive guy. And I and I think they do miss him. Now on holiday, his third, ninth team foul against the Huskies. So court side and join Jen Mueller. Hey Jen. Well guys for as much as they miss Cameron Dollar at the Husky practices a lot of the guys say they can still hear his voice because he was the coach that really got on him for defense and effort during practice and I think he did his job because if his voice is still echoing in, in here during practice I'd say he did a pretty good job. <laughs> no doubt about it. He drives by here basically every day when he heads to work over yep. at Seattle University. 
Yeah, well, it's a great opportunity for him there at, at Seattle U, and um, I think uh, Bill Hogan in there and the staff over there did a, made a, a great choice in picking Cameron, someone right here, because he's well respected in this community and within the state. He's going to be a good recruiter. As you see, Con Dexter getting behind the zone, similar to the way Holiday did earlier for the slam to increase the lead to 28. But Cameron is, is a guy that's going to bring some stability, and he's going to do things the correct way, and uh, people like him, and he's going to be able to recruit and get things going the way they want, the direction they want them going in as they make their way back into Division One. Garcia with the miss from distance. Broussard then missing in the paint. And uh, off the uh, loose ball will be Seattle U ball. Again, Abdul Gaddy. I think they got this one figured out, Francis. Yeah, well, they, they're, they're so concerned. The person down in that, that low area of the zone is just so concerned with what's trying to keep them out of the paint that they're losing sight of the person coming behind them there, get behind that zone. So that's twice they've been able to run that exact play. Three assists for Gaddy. Four for Overton to lead the Huskies. And Pondexter with that slam now at 14 points. Nice steal by Overton. Behind the back. Pondexter off balance. Will head to the line for two. Nearly an and one for Quincy Pondexter. Well, you see the difference between these two teams really on that play right there. Overton with the speed and the quickness to get the steal, get the ball in the open court. He gets into the lane and has the ability to make the play by wrapping the ball around him, which maybe was not necessarily necessary, but drops it off to Pondexter, and he's strong enough and athletic enough to play through the foul and get a chance to get the ball up on the rim and have an opportunity for the three-point play. 15 points, just having a terrific night. Quincy Pondexter coming into this contest, averaging 19 and a half per game. Nearly eight rebounds per game, shooting 54% from the floor. I mean, and, and the numbers just tell part of the story with, with this young guy. He is, he is a, a terrific, terrific character, individual on and off the court, passionate about his team, the game, and a guy who has a really bright future. Thinking about the three and taking it, Alex Jones. And a foul inside. Once again, we connect with Jen Mule. Jen? Well, we've been talking about Quincy and his ability to score, but what we haven't really noticed is a limp that he's developed. He hurt his right ankle at about the 7.30 mark earlier in the half here. He's shaken off medical treatment a couple of times, but I'm guessing that 16 points kind of helps eases that pain a little bit, don't you think? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. And you want to keep playing because the, the more you score and the better your team does, the better you feel. Yeah. So. Why not? Although I got a feeling the way things are going, uh, Coach Romar is going to get pretty deep into that bench. He does anyway, but. Well, he passed Detlef Shrimp in the UCLA game. And if he gets, I believe he needs uh, 16 or 17 tonight to pass Brandon Roy for number 11. So he's uh, close to getting that. The Overton. Over to Suggs. Open look for Scott. He's deadly from beyond the arc. Not that time, though. Burrell out of the pack, on the push. Pull up, no good rebound by Suggs. Three Huskies already into front court. And fortunately, from a Seattle U perspective, the teammates could not get the ball out on an outlet pass. Overton inside, Brian Ammonen. Turner thought about the three. Pull up from 14. Tough shot, but everything's falling tonight. Turner now with eight points. Seattle U has not scored on consecutive possessions in this game. Jones in the corner to Boxley. Mike double team. And it's off Boxley. Another turnover against the Red Hawks, number 13. Huskies with six, 5-13 left in this opening half. All Huskies, 40 to nine. Turner with the air ball. Botchley, Chris Gweth, has some room to operate. Fouled as he went up. And that's gonna go against Scott Suggs. First foul on Suggs. 
So going back to Pondexter for a second, the 16 points he has tonight ties him with Brandon Roy for number 11. If he gets 17, that'll tie him with Doug Smart for number 10. And if he gets 27, he can catch Deion Luton for number nine. Well, I, th I think two of those guys are going to be stepping back. Going to have to move over. Deion may hang on for another game. We'll have to see. <laughs> As Quincy takes a seat. Jones uh, checking out for Seattle U. Broussard back in for the Red Hawks. In and out for Chris Squeth on that second free throw. Huskies lead by 30. 33. Three ball by Turner, who's in double figures with 11. Squeth, nice find. Missed, though, that time by Gilmore. Overton on the push. And Benoy Overton will head to the line. Yeah, too quick, too fast, too much size. Coming off a tough loss. Huskies clicking on all cylinders right now. Friday night, the excitement of the Western Hockey League returns on FSN. The Seattle Thunderbirds will face off against the Spokane Chiefs in Western Conference action from Spokane Arena. Live coverage begins at 7 on FSN and FSN HD. Roy Overton at the line this season, shoots 76%. He had a very strong game at USC with 18 points, one off his career high. Yeah, he did. He was uh, he was very aggressive in taking the ball to the basket. He was the, the lone bright spot uh, in a game that was uh, otherwise pretty much underwhelming. Steal by Turner. Another turnover against Seattle U. Daddy. Nice find inside for Shears. And he's fouled by Gilmore. And I said, nothing, absolutely nothing going right tonight for Seattle U. Just unable to find any type of rhythm, rhythm really offensively or defensively. Now Washington has uh, has really come out with a, with a lot of energy, and the, the one thing that I do like, I do like the fact that they're they are making an effort to drop the ball inside occasionally because they're they're going to need that uh, as we get further and further into this Pac-10 season. Cameron Dollar just substituting Peter Harris into the game as Cervante Burrell checks out. And certainly Cameron coming into this game knew there was a talent gap. But I think certainly had much higher expectations for his club coming into this contest. Very disappointing night for him. Another turnover. Overton to Suggs. Can't get the bounce rebound inside by Gweth. To Broussard. Doubled up by Gaddy and Overton. Down low, Gilmore no good. And the rebound by Brashears. Inside of four minutes left in the opening half. Suggs an open three. Got it. And one. Foul on Peter Harris. Scott Suggs. With the triple, looking to complete the four-point play. It has been all Washington inside, outside, anywhere on the court. The Huskies up by 39. Well, here's the real deal on this game. All Washington, Seattle University, three for 24, shooting 12.5% and 15 turnovers. There is no scenario that you can win a game with those types of numbers. None whatsoever, but you, you have to give credit to Washington. I mean, they had their attention with the, with the win, Seattle U's win over Oregon State. And UW was not going to allow that to happen to them. So they've really come out and, uh, and really played well and played hard. Garcia, who has been quiet, fouled by Brian Amini. Chuck Garcia will head to the line. Make his third trip to the stripe tonight. 0 for 5 from the floor. Huskies on a 13 to 2 run over the last three minutes and 40 seconds. Charles Garcia, junior out of Los Angeles. Just his second point. 
Overton checking out for the Huskies as Pondexter returns. And again, the next time he scores, he will surpass Brandon Roy on the Huskies' all time scoring list. Garcia connects on the second, making it a 49 to 12 Husky lead. And the one thing about Seattle, you. As, as bad as things have gone for them, they're, they're still playing hard and they're still trying to compete. And I know that's what Cameron is looking for right now. I mean, he's trying to build, trying to get his program to this level at the very least. So guys have to come out and compete and show that they're going to play through the adversity because you're going to have nights like this. Washington is coming off a similar bad night that they had in Southern Cal, but you have to continue to compete and play hard. Weff in the corner to Harris. Contact with... Turner and inside a foul will go against Suggs and that should send Garcia back to the line for the Red Hawks. It's actually been a pretty physical game around the basket. Uh, a lot of pushing and shoving and grabbing and holding and Garcia back at the line again where he's lived this entire season. But as you mentioned only a 61 percent foul shooter. 231 free throw attempts. Coming in 47 more than any other player in the nation averaging more than 11 free throws per game. It's interesting. I think Francis in terms of his numbers he would not have those numbers had he been a Husky at least we don't think so. I mean because no. you have those other options in Pondexter and Thomas and the rest of the talent uh, on this team and he I don't know he probably would have played more in the paint back to the basket where Seattle U. There's a guy that's facing the hoop, playing on the perimeter. In terms of his development for the next level, honestly, yeah. Seattle, you may have been better for him. Oh, Inside yeah. Inside Pondexter fouled, and Quincy will head to the line. Well, even after all of the time that uh, Cameron Dollar and the Washington staff had spent recruiting him, they were not aware of his perimeter skills because everywhere they saw him play, he always played in the paint with his back to the basket. It wasn't until this summer where a lot of the guys were coming back to Cameron and saying, hey, coach, I mean, you know, this guy can play away from the basket. So once they got into their, their preseason workouts and their individual workouts and really started seeing what his, his skill set was, they, they saw that, hey, you know, we've got something here. But in high school and in, in J.C., he always played with his back to the basket. So who knew? Well, they know now. <laughs> yeah. Although he's, he's really not put it on all of it on display tonight in terms of his talents. Again, give the Huskies credit for that. Garcia inside. Gets his first bucket. Now one for six from the floor. By the way, with those uh, free throws. In fact, with that first free throw, last time down, Quincy Barndexter, who remains on fire, moved ahead of Brandon Roy on the all-time scoring list. Quincy now with 20 points and seven rebounds. Garcia, no good rebound. And a look ahead. Here come two more. Oh, and a push from behind on Garcia. That is an intentional foul. Cameron Dollar immediately calls Garcia over. And my guess he's going to say, you know what? In a game like this, let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Or go for the ball, but yeah. don't push from behind. Yep. Well, opportunity to teach. I mean, it was a. A poor decision by Garcia to foul him. You see him going over to this place in sportsmanship and, and tell him that, you know, my bad. Wasn't trying to hurt him. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just let him go. Just let him go. So free throws coming up. The officials are going to review the video on that play. And Cameron Dollar. I'm not sure exactly what they're trying to figure out. It's obvious who the foul was on. And it wasn't flagrant. It wasn't a hard foul. I mean, push. it wasn't even a hard foul. I mean, he just pushed him in the back. He displayed the sportsmanship, went over and apologized to him. I mean, it wasn't even a hard foul. He just he pushed him. But if they're looking to see if it was flagrant or not, no. By no means. Again, an intentional foul on Garcia. So they do stick with the ruling of an intentional foul. The foul on Garcia, his second. Free throws for the Huskies and possession. And Pondexter now with 21. Five for five at the line for the senior out of Fresno. That made uh, 17 straight free throws going into the USC game and then missed his first one. It's a first half season high for Pondexter with 22 points had 21 points in the first half 
in that blowout of the Cal Bears. And now Quincy will take a seat. Darnell Gant replacing him. And the Huskies with the 55 16 lead. Turner for three. And the rebound by Gilmore. And Boxley in the front court for the Red Hawks. 150 left in the opening half. Weth trying to penetrate. Good defense that time by Turner. Brian Ammoning ahead to Suggs. Saves it to Gaddy for two. And a foul inside. And it'll go against one of the Huskies. Brian, Brian Ammoning picks it up. Second personal. Second personal. And free throws coming for the Red Hawks. And I think Washington will live with that because that's they need that type of physical play from Brian Manning. They they need that from him. So they they want they can have him and Gant and Brashears. If they all use up all five of their fouls, so what? Be physical, go after all those rebounds and have a presence in there. And again, it's not about it's not about doing anything beyond the rules, but no. it's it's playing hard, tough nose basketball. So Going after rebounds, keeping balls alive. You got somebody driving the lane. Mm -hmm. You want them to think there could be some contact coming. They need to feel it. They need to feel it from time to time. Just like on that baseline drive earlier. Play through that contact. Don't try to avoid it. Play through it. Garrett Lever returning to the Red Hawks lineup. Number 24. Peter Harris checks out. And at 25 left in the half. Huskies up 55 to 16. See how you went to see how you went into a man to man and wanted to get a little half court trap going if they could, but nice job of handling the pressure by Gaddy. Inside Brian Ammoning. 57 to 16. NBA with four points. Guarded by Suggs. Tough fading. That is tough. First ball. And it'll be Husky ball. 47.8 left in the first half. Washington with a 41 point lead. Huskies had a game like this early on in the season. They blew out Portland State 111 to 55. Gaddy inside on the drive. Nice lay in. Abdul Gaddy now with seven points to go along with four rebounds and three assists. Nice stat line for him. Blocking foul on Gant. Garcia to the line. We'll see Seattle U and Portland State on uh, March 2nd on FSN. Second foul on Gant. Garcia at the line where he's connected on five of seven. Just one of seven from the floor. Seven points, just one rebound for Garcia tonight. And on the defensive end, not a lot of rebounds to be had. Washington has really shot the ball very well. This was a hit on a 19 of 36. Seattle U, 4 of 29 from the floor. Just under 14%. Gaddy a fine. And Brian Ammoning will head to the line to shoot two. That's free throws in this contest. The Huskies have connected on 14 of 19 as a team. Seattle U, 10 of 20. Now on Gweth, his third. NBA connecting on 52% from the floor. A trip to uh, L.A. Played just four minutes against UCLA. Came back against uh, SC. Had eight points and six rebounds in 29 minutes against the Trojans. Ten seconds left in the half. Garcia working on Gant. Lock at five. 
Followed good by Gilmore just before the buzzer. And the Huskies head to the locker room up 41 points, 61 to 20. Nothing going right for Seattle U. Everything going right for the Huskies at home. Halftime coverage is coming your way. Stick around. We have more from Bank of America right here on FSN. Second half about to get underway at Bank of America Arena. Charles Garcia and the Red Hawks hoping to make it at least somewhat interesting here in the second half as they trail the Huskies by 41. And maybe we'll get to see some of the, the talents of Chuck Garcia on a greater display here in the second half. He's got a Husky team that did a terrific job against him in the first half. By the way, that Husky lead at halftime, their biggest lead at intermission this season. Garcia doing uh, almost all of his damage at the free throw line. Again, no surprise, he averages over 11 free throws per game, tops in the country, and just uh, not in a comfort zone offensively. In fact, really nobody in no. that Seattle U team has any rhythm on the offensive end. They did, though, win the opening tip yep, well, to we'll start the ball game. We'll see how they respond. Uh, as I said, against Harvard at the, at the Key Arena, which was a home game for them, they were down by 21-22 and came out with a 12-0 run and got themselves right back in it. So Cameron Dollar is just looking for no no lack of effort, keep playing hard, and good, bad, or indifferent, you just got to continue to compete. Get off to a nice start with Cervante Burrell getting the hoop. Overton, strong, and rebound by Broussard. He got tangled up with Overton, and Overton called for the foul, and I think Lorenzo Romar making the point, how can it be a foul? He's <laughs> Not just ground. simply on the ground. <laughs> yeah. and, and conversely for Washington, they can't come out and just kind of now start going through the motions because they're up 41. They need to get themselves into the, the mindset of we have to play 40 minutes, regardless of the level of competition. 40-minute game is what we need to have, so we need to play better in the second half than we did in the first. You can see Burrell kind of lose the handle on that pass, and an easy transition deuce for Justin Holliday on the assist from Abdul Gaddy. Garcia over Brashears, and there's some range finally from Chuck Garcia. Yeah, and that's a good-looking shot. Just turn and face. He gave him space. He took took the opportunity that was there and he's, he's a pretty good outside shooter so just uh, make the game easy holiday speaking of easy that looked very easy for the Huskies from Quincy Pondexter 65 to 24 holiday with 11 points he's now into double figures Burrell with the open look for a three no good on Dexter to holiday four on two break for the Huskies on Dexter will head to the line for two as he's fouled by Mike Boxley. Now, but what I don't like in, with regards to how the Huskies are playing right now, Pondexter on the three-on-one break, underhand pass to Holiday. He gets the rebound here, underhand pass on the, on the break, and then right here the underhand pass back to Pondexter. You have to stay fundamentally sound. Don't start playing around with the basketball because you have this big lead because this is not indicative of the level of competition you're going to be playing against. So keep it sound. Stay, stay solid. The last foul, by the way, not Boxley. It goes on Gweth, his fourth. He'll remain in the game. Mass substitutions by Cameron Dollar. He's already altered his lineup. Taylor Olson back out on the court. Alex Jones checking back into the game. Same story for Gavin Gilmore. Boxley with the offensive rebound. Gilmore, nice move. He'll go inside and was contested by Holiday, but went up strong and got the ball through. Washington takes yep. a 30-second timeout. And a 30 second timeout by Lorenzo Romo. And, and I know what this timeout is about. About what, what you were talking what, about, what, probably. What we talked about earlier. And uh, not about X's and O's. Green the right approach to the court. The Huskies up by four.
Nearly two minutes into the second half, Huskies up by 40. We go courtside and reconnect with Jen Mueller. Jen? Seattle U coach Cameron Dollar really didn't try to hide his disappointment at halftime when I had a chance to talk to him. He admitted that the Huskies overwhelmed his team a little bit and said that they'll still try to chip away in the second half, even though this is a big mountain to overcome. And you guys have touched on it in the first half. Even though Seattle U is down, they have not given up when it comes to effort. They're still going at it awfully hard on the court. Cameron will not have it any other way. Obviously, he's not going to get the result uh, coming into this game that he would have liked, but he certainly is going to make sure that he gets the effort that he demands. Overton inside, tied up. I think one official may have a foul. The other may have a jump ball. It'll be a foul. And that goes against Chris Gweth, and his night is over. Greth is claiming that was five? not me. He was playing with four. They're saying that's five. Cameron Dollar out on the court. And this might be a good opportunity for the officials maybe to see the replay. You can see the shot was contested by Alex Jones. Greth was near the play. Well, then that's a, if that is the case, that's a tough blow for, for Seattle U. You see Overton here. Greth is here. Is right there. Well, that's that's not a foul on Gweth. If anything, a foul on Jones. But what's done is done, and Chris Gweth takes a seat, and he's done for the night. Peter yeah. Harris checking in for Seattle U as Gilmore checks out. Very small lineup on the floor right now for the Red Hawks. As you look at uh, Garrett Lever, number five, Peter Harris, 24, Taylor Olson, 12, Boxley up front. With uh, Alex Jones. So after the free throw, 68 26 Husky lead. Harrison backcourt. Drives in. Followed by Jones, no good. Boxley to Harris. Back to Boxley for the lay in. Mike Boxley getting his second bucket. He has four points. Foul underneath. And here, here's one thing you do not want in a game like this. You do not want a lot of fouls and have this thing end up spending a lot of time at, at both free throw lines. So <laughs> I'm just being honest. Let's just play ball. Von Dexter in the corner, double teamed, fouled. And you see Lorenzo, I don't think we got a shot of that, but you see Lorenzo imploring his guys to pass the ball. Yeah. That's what they did such a great job of in the first half. And now all of a sudden, you got ball stoppers out there because we're up 40 and, and everything's flowing our way, but you want to continue to be solid. Move the basketball the way you did in the first half and get open looks. That's a good find by over to knock the shot down by Holiday. That's the way they played in the first half. Holiday. Justin Holiday with 13 points. And a foul. Benoit mm -hmm. Overton. We got a That's his third. We got a little something going on here with Overton and Harris. We got to keep our eye on those All two. Right. There's a little something going on, going on there. Two team fouls against the Huskies. Four team fouls against Seattle U. See that? See, there's this something going on with those two. Held ball, possession but, arrow pointing to Washington. Washington Overton, Gaddy, Holiday, Pond Dexter, and Matthew Bryan Amning on the court right now for the Huskies. Olsen, Harris, Lever, Boxley with the hold and the foul on Pond Dexter. Also out on the court for Seattle U, Alex Jones. And Seattle U wanting to continue to scrap and play hard. You see this, the double team there. Overton and Harris, they get tied up. And uh, you see there's a little extra there between the two of them. They've been playing each other real physical here to start this second half. Cameron Dollar with some issues. And he and Coach Romar were at midcourt. And Cameron was doing most of the talking. Lorenzo was doing most of the listening. But when the referee was telling them to, to settle down a little bit, Cameron was telling his guys, no, no, keep playing hard. Keep playing hard. They're, not, they're not playing dirty. No. He just wants them to continue to play hard and compete. 
17 13 left in the game with the Huskies leading 70 to 28. Not a trying to not officials trying to clean it up. Foul on Harris. Already 16 fouls against Seattle U. Foul on Harris, his third. <laughs> Another foul. Beaver went to help up Overton. He declined the assists. Foul on Lever. That's his third. And we are in the bonus situation for the Huskies. Seventh team foul against Seattle U. So even with this being the case now, I, I think Seattle U, I'm not going to say they lost their composure. They're just trying to make a statement. They're trying to make a statement that you're not going to just push us push us out of here if we go down we're going to go down with a fight at the same time Washington has to maintain their composure and as coach Romar talked about remain professional and play through regardless of how physical or how tough Seattle you can, can wants to play them just keep playing our brand and our style of basketball Overton earns the second Garcia Burrell and Broussard have returned to the Seattle U lineup Roy Overton with that free throw. Perfect five for five at the line tonight. Total of seven points, also seven assists, a couple of rebounds. The junior out of Franklin High School in Seattle, now with eight points and a 72 28 Husky lead. Overton with the defense on Cervante Burrell. Overplay by Holiday. Good defensive intensity mm -hmm. right there by Justin. Well, he's taking taking on this matchup with Garcia and done a good job. Burrell got himself into trouble. And how did he get the headshot to go? Drove in, saw Pine Dexter, got off balance, threw it up, but see the hustle to drop. See Quincy nonchalant with the basketball. Lever from behind. Burrell countering for Seattle U goes inside. Garcia cleans it up. Garcia. Little energy, a little, a little momentum for Seattle U. A foul in backcourt against Burrell. Bucket for Garcia gave him 13 points. Third personal foul on Burrell. Eighth team foul against Seattle U. And we see Quincy in the open court. And see, he's being nonchalant. He's, he's standing straight up. He's not doesn't have any awareness. His teammates aren't talking to him. Wolf, wolf, or whatever their terminology is with somebody coming up from behind him. And again, 40 minutes of solid, fundamentally sound basketball is I'm sure what that staff is looking for. First three and a half minutes have not been so for Washington. Garcia in the front point uh, court, guarded by Pine Dexter. Charles with the spin, left hand. Quincy with a rebound. And here come the Huskies. Offensive foul. Brian Amening is he takes out Lever. Garrett Lever, by the way, son of a former Arizona State star and NBA player, Fat Lever. Foul on Brian Amening, his third. You think he's still fat, or he wants to be called Lafayette now? He was never fat, <laughs> but he got the nickname Fat. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Player. Oh no, he's. He used to do it big. I think it was Arizona State teams. Oh, I think it was with Alton Lister. Yep. Uh, he spent some time with the uh, Sonics. Jones held by Brian Amining. Foul on NBA. That's his fourth, also the fourth team foul. Oh, four minutes and ten seconds into the second half, and the Huskies with that huge lead over Seattle U. Huskies up by 41 over the Red Hawks. 15-50 left to play at Bank of America Arena. We've been uh, all Washington since the uh, opening tip, and Francis, some um, familiar faces 
for Seattle University on hand. Today. Well, you see uh, four guys there that competed against each other when this rivalry was pretty hot and heavy before uh, Seattle would be emphasized basketball. From right to left there on your screen, your screen, Kenny Lyles, who played at the University of Washington, and Don Vaughn. And then Carl Irvin, one of their all-time greats, and Kevin Souter. Those four guys are all local products. Uh, Kenny went to Garfield. Vaughn was from Pasco. Carl on a couple of great high school teams at Cleveland High School. And then Kevin Souter, who was from, I believe, Mercer Island, if I'm not mistaken, with Mercer Island High School. But uh, four guys that are a part of the history of this rivalry that, that played in it back in the late 70s and uh, early 80s here. Rooting on their respective teams, and uh, right now I guess Kenny and Don got a little more to talk about than uh, Kevin and Carl. I was going to say, nice though that, that Kenny and Don weren't taunting their. Uh, well, they Seattle knew they were on camera. So I was going to say they, they they cleaned it up for the cameras. No, look, see yeah. there. Uh, they're they're being pretty classy being about humble. it. But uh, four good guys. Kenny was actually my high school teammate at Garfield, and uh, played against Don in the in the state tournament when he was at Pasco, and of course Carl with. Jawan Oldham and James Jawan Oldham who played at Seattle U. James Woods who played here at at the University of Washington uh, played on the back to back state championship teams at Cleveland 75 and 76 Souter, of course of the Mercer Island Ed Pepple program. So four really good high school players back in their day who had nice careers uh, at the Division one level. Good to have them here tonight. That's a held, ball. held ball possession arrow pointing. In favor of the Huskies. Holiday, Gant, Pondexter, Gaddy, Overton. On the floor for Washington, Broussard, Boxley, Garcia, Olson, and Burrell on the court for the Red Hawks. Cameron Dollar raising an issue with one of the officials. And it may be the possession arrow. Maybe Cameron is contending that it should be Seattle U ball. Huskies possession to inbound 30 seconds on the shot clock. Holiday inside Overton. Fouled. It's going to be the 10th team foul against Seattle U. Between the Huskies in the double bonus. 10 fouls committed by the Red Hawks in the first four minutes and 20 seconds of this half. And I think that's all a part of Coach Dollar and his team wanting to Send a message that they weren't going to go away, that they weren't going to go away without without a fight, which is which is commendable. I mean, you, you want them to play through this. Fourth foul on Cervante Burrell. Ref is already fouled out. And if you've been watching and you're wondering where is Isaiah Thomas tonight, Isaiah with a stomach flu is not at the arena. And Scott Suggs was hit with that flu a couple weeks ago. Assistant uh, Jim Shaw also hit with it. The whole team had it in preseason. Yeah. A terrific, terrific passing by the Huskies, finished off by Abdul Gaddy. Give the assist to Darnell Gant. Terrific transition basketball by the Dogs. That's a nice job in the open court by Gant. I mean, we're talking 6'8, six, 6'9, six, 4 5 man for the Huskies and catches the ball in the open court and makes a good decision. Nice bounce pass right on the money, and Gaddy finishes at the rim and plays through the foul. Abdul Gaddy closing in on his career high, which is 13 points. He has 10. Justin Holiday already with a career high tonight, as he has 13 on six of seven shooting. Quincy Pondexter leading the way, 23 points, nine rebounds, so a board away from a double double. Well, a lot of little things Washington can continue to work on in this game with the big lead. I mean, let's make our free throws. Let's stay on the glass, not give up second shots. Let's not turn the basketball over. Speaking of turnovers, that one committed by Garcia. Seattle University with 19 turnovers tonight. Averaged uh, just over 17 per game coming in. Another foul. Keep, keep the managers on their toes. Make sure Clarence Trent and Brendan Schur have their jerseys on over their warm-ups because <laughs> they're going to get in the game here pretty quick. Taylor Olson picking up his third foul. Brendan Shear, the people's choice. People's choice. Walk on this year. And uh, he should be able to get some significant playing time tonight with this margin for the Huskies. But Benoit Overton extends to 45 points. Quick look there at Brendan Shear. 
And only over three. Ten points, seven assists. Huskies with five players in double figures. On Dexter is 23. Holiday with 13. Turner 11. And then 10 by both Overton and Gaddy. Garcia, the only Red Hawk in double figures with 13. Hawk, good defense start, by yeah. Washington. Nice uh, help coming over Darnell Gant as he uh, cut off the baseline. Aaron Broussard hit a roadblock. Good look at Aaron out of Federal Way High School. 6'5 sophomore. Olsen launching the three and getting it down. T.O. Taylor Knocks Olsen. Down the three. First made three pointer tonight for the Red Hawks and then Olsen committing the foul. Seattle U one of eight from beyond the arc. Foul on Olsen his fourth. So he's in jeopardy of an early exit. As Vinoy Overton heads back to the line. Vinoy at the stripe tonight. He's already taken 10 free throws, made eight. Well, Boxley and Olsen and Gweth, the three seniors on the team for Seattle U, and actually came into the program when the whispers were that they were going to go back to Division I. So these, uh, these three guys at least will be able to look back and say they were part of getting the program back to that level. Each one of them have done a great job while they've been at Seattle U, have had a good basketball experience obviously they're getting a great education at Seattle yeah. U and uh, they'll be able to look back fondly with their time there both uh, academically and athletically. Right, Overton after his work at the line now with 12 points another foul. That goes against Overton. That's his fourth. Sixth team foul against the Huskies and quickly Scott Suggs will check in we presume for Vinoy. Can make that pass. Pondexter right on the sideline. Have it sniffed out. Overton does check out as Suggs checks in. Scott with three points, three rebounds tonight. And the ball's being defended on the sideline like that. One of the most important things is to use the ball fake to move the defense. Boxley looking inside of Jones. That's that's a nice job yeah, by Jones. Good post up. That was good a good post, post up. up in. See, he played through the contact. He just made a good physical move, and I'm going to play through the contact and, and draw the foul and get to the line. That foul goes against Suggs, his third, seventh team foul. A couple free throws coming up for Alex Jones, who shoots 75% from the line. Actually, Jones, best three point shooter on this Seattle U team. Coming into the game, hits on 11 of 23, 40. 7%. Total team fouls in this game. Seattle University with 30. Huskies with 20. Inside Broussard with the offensive rebound and then Broussard called for the. I thought a foul call. Yeah it is a foul call on Broussard. That's his second personal. And the Huskies take over possession. That'll be a turnover against Seattle U. 20th against the Red Hawks. Foul in backcourt on Harris. Renzo Romar quickly calling his club over. I don't think he liked the way they were kind of standing around on that inbound play. Again, with the big lead, he's trying to make sure guys stay focused on their responsibility on each and every offensive possession and defensive assignment. Something I'd like to see Washington do when they get back into Pac-10 play is exactly what Seattle U is doing right now. They did it a little bit at the end of the USC game, but for the most part, their their pressure has just been man-to-man, -man, full court. I'd like to see them do a little more trapping and change their defenses up because the one thing Cameron has done consistently all season with the Red Hawk team is they change their defenses up quite a bit, and particularly with their presses. And I think Washington has it obviously has more athletes and, and better athletes, and that's something that they could do especially with the depth that they have and they could pressure people and do it in a lot of different ways. Elston Turner hitting one out of two. Foul on Gant his third. Eighth team foul. Free throws coming up. One and one for Chuck Garcia. Number 22 on this throwback uh, jersey night for Seattle University in honor of one Elgin Baylor as you look at 
some of the famous numbers in Seattle University history. Now, a number of these numbers, if you will, have been retired. Yes. Every player with a retired number gave his permission for that number to be worn here tonight. So, whether it was Elgin Baylor or Clint Richardson, number 44, they all said, by all means, wear those numbers again. Numbers for the Red Hawks. Garcia missing the throw down, the pass off target. On Dexter, over to Suggs. And Broussard in backcourt. A lot of contact there. And there's the foul call. Here you go, back in the day. Elgin Baylor, you see in the back row, number 22 right there. The long sleeve, and obviously a, a color change from then to now. Red and white, the official colors for Seattle University. Then, as it is tonight, burgundy and gold. Checking in for Seattle University. Garcia the, checking out. The full shirt, short sleeves. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's taking it way back. Garrett Lever also checking out of the Seattle University lineup. Harris and Cervante Burrell in the backcourt now for Seattle U. Suggs making it an 82-38 Husky lead with 13-45 left in this second half. Burrell in the corner to Harris, guarded by Turner. Harris dribbling the ball off his foot. Burrell scoops it up. Jones with the pick. Nice split of the defense by Burrell. Can't finish. Gant can't control the rebound. Seattle U will get another crack at it. Well, Darnell Gant, a young man who, you know, Francis, I think the Huskies expected more development out of, of this year. He's been kind of stagnant in terms of what he did in really a solid freshman season a year ago. What does he need to do to really become more of a factor for this club? We talked about having more of a presence, more of a, a toughness by those big guys inside. Well, he did a great job of taking advantage of his red shirt year and then coming in when it was time for him to play and doing a nice job. Yeah. I think he's the one, I think he's the player on this team that misses John Brockman the most. Because John, you know, took up so much space in there and you had to be so concerned and aware of where he was that all Darnell had to do was kind of be the garbage man. So yeah. he went and got all of the rebounds that people were fighting John for. If he didn't get them, he went and got them. And this year they wanted him to rebound more, and early in the year he wasn't doing that. I thought he did a nice job of knocking down a little 10-, 12-foot jump shot in the corner. Yep. He seemed to be expanding it out to the elbow and was doing that. But he wasn't rebounding and defending the way that they wanted him to, and so that gave Brashears the opportunity, and now he's moved into the starting lineup. But I think as we get deeper in the season because of his experience, and the fact that Brashear still is not really in basketball shape and he can only really practice a couple of times a week, which I think Jen may have more on that. There's going to be an opportunity for Darnell to uh, get those minutes back because they're going to need it. Just a sophomore. So, I mean, he, he, he still got a lot of basketball to play for Lorenzo Romar. The last foul, by the way, was on Aaron Broussard, his fourth. Taylor Olson with the ball. He has four fouls, trying to find Boxley inside. It's stolen by Gaddy, and a nice job bringing the ball into front court by Abdul. He finds Gant. Pondexter connecting. Relatively quiet second half for Quincy Pondexter after the explosive first half. Olson looking for three and finding three more. He can do that. Taylor Olson can do that. Ask uh, Spencer Halls and Martell Webster. <laughs> He can, he can knock those shots down. Gant with the reverse. These teams starting to get up and down the court on each other. Olsen inside. Couldn't get it to go. Rebound by Pondexter. Quincy with that last hoop up to 25 points and 11 rebounds. His double-double is secured. Loose ball. Burrell ahead to Olsen. Back to Boxley. Mike losing it. Turner with it. Two on one Huskies. Contact, offensive foul against Quincy Pondexter. Quincy made that last shot from the outside, but he's he's lost focus. A little flip shot he did earlier in the lane. And now that opportunity there, he had to just pass it back to Turner for a layup. And uh, that's just 
the focus and the concentration that were at such an optimum level earlier is just not there now. Third foul on Quincy Pondexter. Clarence Trent will check in for the first time tonight. Got his jersey on. Freshman. Has a jersey on, so he's passed the first test. He's ready to play. Clarence, a very uh, explosive player, very gifted. Just has uh, has some inexperience to overcome. And some get off his feet there. Turner with the rebound. Jailbreak for the Huskies going the other way. Suggs open for a three. Quincy keeps it alive. Rebound by Garcia. Foul on Pine Dexter with the push. Foul number four. We have a timeout. When we come back, we're going to tell you about a couple of players in this game whose dads played in the NBA as teammates in the Mile High City. Stick around. Plenty to cheer about for the Washington Huskies tonight as they are controlling this contest and have from the get-go against Seattle University. 11-33, left to play in the second half. Elston Turner for the Huskies. There's Elston Turner, dad. Senior playing uh, in the NBA with one of the clubs he played with, the Dallas Mavericks. And Elston Sr. was a teammate with the father of one of the Seattle University players on hand tonight. As you look at Elston Jr. out of Missouri City, Texas, the sophomore guard. Had his fat lever with the Denver Nuggets, and that is where fat and Elston Turner were teammates for a couple of seasons in the mid 80s in the Mile High City. And there's that son, Garrett Lever, a junior out of Phoenix, Arizona. So I wonder if later tonight the dads might get on the phone and chat it up a little bit about this contest. Elston Turner, an assistant coach with the uh, Houston Rockets right here. Along with Jack Sick. Yep. Was at the uh, Seattle Sports Star of the Year Awards last week and had some shots of Jack Vintage Perm, if you remember Jack when he had the perm, the perm. Going. <laughs> yep. Not his best look, but a great player and a terrific guy. On cue, Elston Turner with the deuce. And Turner now with 14 points. Huskies with five players in double figures, led by the 25 of Quincy Pondexter. Husky lineup, Turner, Gaddy, Trent, Holiday, and Suggs. As Lever goes inside and draws contact against Holiday. And Garrett Lever will head to the strike. Yeah, Clarence Trent didn't do a good job that time of helping to defend on that on that pick and roll. He, he didn't allow, didn't get out far enough and hedge far enough to to make him make a to detour him from going to the basket and allow his teammate to get underneath the screen to recover. Hey, a reminder to join us again on Thursday for a big night of Pac-10 hoops. Action tips off from Corvallis as Oregon State does battle with USC. That's followed by Ernie Kent's Ducks of Oregon squaring off with UCLA. Live coverage gets underway at 5 p.m. on FSN and FSN HD. 89-43 Huskies. Lever made one out of two. Trent. Dropping the ball, Burrell picks it up, heads the other direction, and gets it to go over Clarence Trent, who is going for the block. Nice play by Cervante Burrell. Burrell with 10 points as he becomes the second Red Hawk into double figures. Garcia with 16. Turner with the left and one. Elston Turner will head to the stripe, and he's having a big ball game with 16 points to go along with three rebounds. Not something we've seen Elson Turner do much this year, getting the ball to the basket. He's basically been an outside shooter, but a good job of getting into the lane and finishing with the left hand and giving himself an opportunity for three-point play. Elson Turner with a new career high now with those 16 points. And now make it 17 as he completes the three-point play and scored 15 points earlier this season back on December 3rd in that overtime loss at Texas Tech. Huskies nearing 100 with the 92-45 lead. Burrell coming up short. Loose ball by Turner. Held ball, possession arrow. Pointing to Seattle U. 
First time tonight we've seen Washington go into a zone. Got 10 minutes left in the game. Not not a bad time for them to maybe work on some things that they're going to be using as they get deeper into the season. Renzo Romar in his eighth season as head coach of the Huskies. First season here without Cameron Dollar on his bench. All into Boxley with an open look, and Mike connects. Boxley with six points, He's made three of five shots tonight. Overton out of the double team to Holiday. And the foul against Boxley, I think, away from the ball. Check it, it goes against Jones. Alex Jones committing his fourth foul. And with both teams in the double bonus, Clarence Trent steps to the line to shoot two. Clarence has made eight of 11 this season. Well, he is definitely one of the better athletes on this Washington team. We saw him at Midnight Madness put on a real display dunking the basketball. He's had a few highlight reel dunks here in the season, but uh, he's going to be a good one for Washington, I think, is he uh, kind of biding his time going through the freshman doldrum, so to speak, of being on the bench, but uh, I think Clarence is going to be a solid player for Washington. Francis is, is one of his big issues, and we haven't seen a ton of him. Does he need to develop more of a perimeter game in terms of his shot, or is that there? We just haven't seen that much of it. Well, with his size, he is kind of a tweener. Yeah. So it would be nice for him to develop some things on the on the perimeter, which would allow him to maybe get on the court. But the one thing that he is very good at that I've seen in the time that we've seen him is that he is a very good passer, and he's a real good interior passer. And uh, you know, those those are things you don't often find with guys. Bruce Sard scoring for the Red Hawks. Huskies will maintain possession. Aaron Broussard now. Tough With luck. Two for points. First basket for him tonight. Tough luck for Olsen on that last yeah. shot. I mean, he's looking that for thing his third three all the, the way down in the basket and then comes out. Jones checking out. Gavin Gilmore, senior out of Pasco High School, returning to the Red Hawk lineup. Nine thirty-five left to play here at Bank of America Arena on a night when the Huskies have really done a terrific job and again playing without Isaiah Thomas tonight who has the flu is not in the building. Foul will go against Boxley. That's his fourth. So on the court right now four Red Hawks with four fouls. Boxley, Burrell, Broussard, and Taylor Olson. And Holiday at the line tonight with that miss, one of three. He has 13 points though. That's a new career high for him. Previous high was 10 in the blowout back in November of Portland State. Burrell checking out for Seattle U. Garcia back in the lineup for the Red Hawks. Huskies have shot 47 free throws here tonight. Made 33. Seattle U has made 15 of 28. And Seattle U really has no point guard on the floor right now because Olsen is not a one, but he's going to try to direct traffic out there. And Washington really needs to uh, to play tough as they go into the zone defense that they're, they're going to need. They leave a wide open look for Boxley in the corner. And what you always have to guard against when you play zone, the weak side yeah. rebounding. So a lot left to work on here for Washington with still nine minutes to play. Rebound and basket by Broussard. And another foul. And that goes against Gavin Gilmore. That's his third personal. And Scott Suggs will head the stripe. Three for five there tonight. Six points for Suggs. And good ball movement by Seattle U. Boxley spots up in the corner, gets a good look, shot goes up. You see Garcia's in position for a rebound, and a nice job by Broussard to come from the wing to uh, corral that rebound and lay it in. So Washington has to do a better job of getting on the glass as they now try to do it in the, out of the zone defense as opposed to what they typically do with the man to man. Suggs makes both free throws, but a lane violation against Trent, and it's wiped away. Renzo Romar jumping 
on that. He's just so frustrated. To, to why why do that? I mean, it's not that the game, again, it's the point you made earlier in this half. It's not that this game is in question. He just wants to see his guys do things the right way. Garcia inside gets it to go. And Trent called for an intentional foul as he inbounded the ball and made contact with Garcia. Well, we might get a chance to, to take a look at it. See Garcia go up. Well, there was there was some contact there. I don't know if, if it wasn't just incidental, but there was definitely contact. But it goes back to what Coach Romar was talking about at the half, that you can't allow yourself, as you saw Garcia grab his, his shorts there right quick, you can't allow yourself to get caught up in all of that. You just got to remain professional, as he said, and, and finish the game. Garcia now 11 of 15 at the line. He has 19 points. He's connected on just 4 of 13 from the floor. Well, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about, about Chuck Garcia Francis in terms of as a junior, a guy who's been heavily scouted by the NBA. Is there any way that he comes back for his senior season? Any thoughts on that? Well, if I was a, if I was a betting man, Travel. I would say probably not. And, yeah. the, and, a, and the reason I say that is just uh, from conversations that I have had with some people about his personal situation, um, if he has that opportunity to go, he should probably go. Just is there any doubt you think right now that he's a, at least a first round pick? Well, I don't think it's a lot. Uh, I, I think that it's a very good possibility. I know that there have been a number of teams that have been basically following him around ever since the word got out about uh, his talent. But I could definitely say right now there's a very strong possibility because I've seen enough NBA people and enough agents yeah. around. That's always a sign. Yeah, that's always a sign. <laughs> there have been enough NBA people and enough agents around that the buzz is probably that this guy is a first-round pick. And, and when you look at his talent, he would be drafted on his potential. Yeah. So if you look at a team, maybe not a lottery team, but a team at the bottom of the first round that doesn't need a guy to come in right away and contribute, where they can they can work with him and just bring him along slowly. I I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if someone taking him in the first round because he is definitely talented. Double dribble on Olsen. The reason you, you need to from his standpoint need as much information as you can. First round guaranteed contract second round not when you're talking about the NBA. Exactly. So that's an important part of of that decision making process for any young man who might be a late first round potential. Uh, early second round pick. You know, even if we look at it from uh, the standpoint of uh, the situation with Jake Locker. Yeah. You know, a lot of people thought just because the collective bargaining agreement with the NFL is getting ready to change that he needed to go. But I think from if we just start talking strictly football he needed to come back because he's probably not ready. And if you're talking in, in Chuck Garcia's case about a late first round pick. You're going to one of the stronger teams in the NBA, a team that's not looking for an immediate impact from a rookie taken in that position. So that potential they can work with, mm -hmm. wait on a little bit, and uh, not have high expectations right out of the gate. Broussard with the foul. He's done as he fouls out of the contest with four points. Let's go uh, courtside to Jen Mueller. And a little more information from Jen. Well, you guys have talked about how the scouts are just catching on to Chuck and Charles Garcia. Well, the Husky players have known about him for a long time because they play a lot of pickup games against Seattle U in the offseason. And if you believe the Huskies, they usually play like these best of seven series. And right now, the dogs have the upper advantage. And they kind of view tonight's game as an extension of that series. But I'm going to say, if I'm the dogs, I'm going to be careful this offseason because I think Seattle U might be coming after them a little harder. Well, it adds a little flavor to those games, no doubt about it. Oh, yeah, well, you know, the summer will be interesting, but next year they get them in Key Arena. Yeah. They, they play at Key Arena next year, so uh, it'll be a home game for the Red Hawks. They will definitely be much more familiar with those surroundings and will have had longer to make that their home court and try to create that home court advantage. So it'll be an interesting uh, set of circumstances next year. 7.55 left to play, the Huskies. Still in front, as you might imagine. They're going to stay in front for this huge lead over Seattle.
Well, it's not a long ride home for the Red Hawks, but about as long as a four mile drive can be. I don't think, I think he might make him walk. Maybe. Oh, pretty play. Matthew Bryan Amining with the finish. Roy Overton with the assist, his eighth to go along with 13 points. NBA with eight points tonight. From the corner, Harris. Well, they're the going to get a lot of stuff. Washington's going to get a lot of stuff on film that they're going to need to work on if they're going to if they're going to play some zone. I know the zone might be uh, an attempt to, to back off a little bit with such a big lead, but it's you know, not out of the realms of reality that they may need to play zone at some point sometimes. So they need to continue to work on it and, and, and stay focused. Gavin Gilmore with a foul, his fourth. Holiday at the line with the Huskies two points shy of 100. Huskies with a season high of 111 points in the uh, victory early this season against Portland State. The Huskies also with a season high 51 free throw attempts. They've made 36. And with that, they reach the century mark and lead the Red Hawks 100 to 57 with 720 still left to play. A total of 111, very much in jeopardy. Olsen on the ground, gets it over to Boxley. Ball movement by the Red Hawks. Jones in and out and back in again for three. Just a friendly roll. Jones is a good outside shooter. The game against um, Harvard, we saw him knock down a couple shots from the outside. Held ball. And the possession arrow pointing to Seattle U. Jones, a junior out of Phoenix, transfer from Scottsdale Community College. Well, Seattle U and, and, and Coach Dollar and what they're trying to get going here, one of the things that he talked to me about was wanting to do a great job of recruiting the local talent. Wanted to be similar to the, to the Memphis program. Want to look up one day where he's got a core group of guys from this city, from this area, with other guys from around the country sprinkled in. And another thing that'll make this game very interesting. Next year, the recruiting class that Coach Dollar has coming in with three guys right now. He's got Chad Rasmussen down at Tacoma Community College, excellent outside shooter at about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, who is a local product. He's coming in next year. Mark McLaughlin, people may remember him. Played at Bothell, originally was going to go to WSU, wanted to get re-recruited, went to Nevada, wanted to get re-recruited, went to Baylor, changed his mind, and now he's coming to Seattle U. But another local product that will add some depth and some shooting to this program. And Freddie Wilson from the Franklin program, who's at a prep school right now, uh, will be at Seattle U next year. So that'll add even more local flavor to this game as this rivalry with the five-year deal and you make it six with the exhibition game, so to speak, that they played last year. This rivalry will, will pick up and get a lot more heated as time goes along. Yeah, in fact, they played last year because uh, Lehigh couldn't get to town because of the big because snow the we storm. had. Right. And so uh, there was room on the schedule. and. UW reached out to uh, Seattle U or Seattle U reached out to them. Either way, they got it going and uh, played the game, and now they plan on playing on a regular basis. So yep. another two points for the Huskies. Boxley, by the way, with that last foul, his fifth, he's done. He leaves with six points. Uh, one more piece to that local regional puzzle, and the game's being played, and we'll be in good shape. Well, what are you referring to, Francis? Well, we saw the. The uh, fan poll earlier about the rivalry deal. Yeah. And uh, I know what you're talking it'll, about. It'll happen. Yeah. I, I have a. I, I feel good that it, it that it's going to happen. Washington Gonzaga, of course, is what yeah. I'm referring yeah. to on the on the basketball court. We get that game back in place. Now we've touched all the bases. All the lines have been crossed, and we'll always have some great regional rivalry games during the basketball season. And that one will probably be at the top of the list. Zags rolling right now. Eight straight wins. And when you take a look at what your favorite Northwest rivalry is, Washington against Washington State, 56% are fan polls question. Central and Western getting some pretty good representation. Like doing better than Oregon against Oregon State. Overton, man, he is just making a living at the uh, line tonight. 15 out of 18 free throws for Vinoy Overton, who has 17 points. Pondexter with the steal. Slow it down a bit. Ryan Ameny. Holiday, looked like he was stepping out of bounds, <laughs> didn't he, by like a foot? It did. 
Holiday. Brian oh, Amity over the back of Jones. And that should be that for Matthew Brian Amity. Number five against him. Huskies and Cougars, speaking of rivalries, renew theirs on the hardwood later this week on FSN. On Friday, the Washington women shoot for their 29th straight victory in their series with the Cougars. And on Saturday, Clay Thompson and Washington State take on Quincy Pine Dexter and the Dogs from uh, right here at Bank of America Arena. Both matchups right here on FSN and FSN HD. Okay, let's get the Brendan chant going now. I'm so it, he should be out there, Sue. <laughs> I'm pulling for him. Taylor Olson checking out as Gavin Gilmore checks in. There's Brendan Shear, walk on, sophomore, 6'9, out of Archbishop Murphy High School. Has not scored this season. And that dog pack is aware of that. Well, we talked about that flu bug earlier. They had to put out the call for yep. the, the walk-ons because they didn't have enough guys to have a full practice. And uh, as a result of that, when everybody got healthy and uh, got back on the court, Brendan was able to stay with the team. And uh, that's a nice reward for coming and yeah. helping the guys out. And he's uh, probably having a great experience. I'm sure he wants to get in the game and play a little bit. But hey, he started his started the, the school year just being an ordinary student. And now look at him. He's a uh, on regional television. <laughs> get some free get some free travel. <laughs> Go to LA, Tempe, Tucson, Corvallis, right. Eugene, all the stops. The last basket by Quincy Pondexter, upping his scoring total to 27, and that'll be that as he checks out. And I don't think we're going to see him again, leaving with a double double with those 27 points and 11 rebounds, hitting on nine of 11 shots from the floor, seven of eight at the line. Terrific night. The senior out of Fresno. He's leading 106-63. Garcia with 20 points now to continue to lead the Red Hawks. The only other Red Hawk in double figures, Cervante Burrell with 10. So the 27 ties him with Deion Luton for number nine on the all-time scoring list. In and out is Suggs. Jones with a rebound. Harris ahead to Lever. Jones is a good three-point shooter. Thought about it. Didn't have enough room to launch. Lever will. Gant with the rebound. And Overton on the push. And if you don't stop him, he'll do that and one. Grenoy Overton. Great body control, and he's very good at the rim with both hands. Well, this certainly has to be a record for Vinoy Overton in terms of free throws attempted and made during a game. He steps to the line, having made 15 of 18, total of 19 points. Foul against Gilmore. He's done. That's his fifth. Leaves with four points. As Overton looks to complete the three-point play. Boxley, Gilmore, Gueff, Broussard have all fouled out of this contest for Seattle U. 109-63. We approach the five-minute mark left to play. Again, the Husky season high, 111 points. Little doubt they're going to go well past that in this contest. Burrell, Olsen thought about the three. A little floater. That's Abdul Gaddy-like. The kind of little runner in the... Half shot, if you will. Good to see T.O. have a little success in his senior season, particularly here against Washington. As eight good, points. Good, good kid out of Blanchett High School. The game I was referring to when he was in high school, when I talked about Martel Webster and Spencer Hawes in high school, he had a big time game. Winner to state, Seattle Prep versus Blanchett. And Taylor Olson had a big time game, 30, 30 plus. And uh, they knocked Seattle Prep out of the playoffs and went to state. And uh, it was a stunner, but he had a huge game that night. Those threes we saw him hit earlier, he was dropping those in from everywhere. That game, when you had a team with two future NBA players, two future NBA first-rounders coming up short, uh, that was talked about a lot at that time and, and has been ever since. And let's give credit where credit is due. Seattle Prep came back the next year and won the state championship. Overton misfiring from long range. Olsen on the push to Burrell and one 
for Cervante Burrell. The foul on Abdul Gaddy. That's his third. Well, Burrell's not quite as big and fast. Not quite as big and as quick and fast as Overton, but he does a good job for Seattle U pushing the ball up the floor also. And you see him finishing strong with the right hand and has a chance for the three-point play. All dogs in front of Seattle U, 109-67, 3.47 left play. Let's take a look at our Alberto Beef Jerky Alpha plays of the game. Plenty of alleys and plenty of oops tonight, Francis. For the Huskies, is, uh, they have the transition game going. Well, they jumped on Seattle. And set U. plays as yeah, well. Yeah, they jumped out on them early and, and, and really have not let up. Uh, we've seen Holiday get a couple dunks. We saw Pondexter. You see Brian Ammoning getting one there. But uh, just personnel-wise, physically, Seattle, you could not match up. And as Cameron Dollar admitted, his guys were just overwhelmed by this, by this atmosphere and, and by this Husky team from the beginning and uh, really, really never had a chance. But to their credit, have continued to fight and scrap. And uh, better days lie ahead for Seattle. You that I can, uh, I can promise you. Burrell completes the three-point play with 13 points. Suggs for three. Got it. Scott Suggs into double figures with 10. Washington now with six players in double figures. And a new season high with 112 points. Jones no good. Holiday with the rebound. Four on three break for the Dogs. Trent. Holiday the trailer inside. That's nice. That's nice. Jump hook. Didn't make the shot, but that was good ball movement. That was good. Wilson in the front court for the Red Hawks as we approach the three-minute mark. Left to play here at Bank of America Arena. Burrell. Rebound Holiday. Weaver and Suggs go down, both back up. And Not Weaver him. with the... Uh, Check it, Burrell with the steal, and then the reach out and grabbing foul on Benoit Overton. That is his fifth. And uh, Quincy Pondexter will be joined on the bench by uh, Mr. Overton as we take a look at our U.S. Marines, and leaders of the game. And that guy was outstanding tonight. 27 points, made 9 of 11 field goals. Oh, yeah, 11 rebounds, seven double double of the season for the senior out of Fresno, number 20, Quincy Pondexter. As you look at career scoring leaders, Louis Nelson, as soon as he gets past uh, Dion Luton in the next game, will be on the hit list. Steve Haas, all within the reach. James Edwards as well of Quincy Pondexter. Reason for him to smile tonight, he and his team putting on a, a terrific show. Roy Overton checking out with 20 points as he committed his fifth foul. Also a career high eight assists for Benoit tonight. Turner for three, 115 to 70. Huskies in front. Harris from the corner, he cans three. Peter Harris. They're dropping them in from everywhere, both teams. Harris two for two from beyond the arc, 115-73. Okay, next. Suggs, your turn. Hey. Inside coming out of the pack is Garrett Lever. Burrell, pull up. Rebound by Gaddy. That duel looks long, but decides to just dribble it into front court. Suggs, nice hesitation move. Hangs, and he'll head to the line. Fouled by Harris. He dubs all-time points scored in the game record, 130, 130 against my daughter's future school, Chico State. Is that right? She's not going there to play hoops. Okay. Uh, that was back in uh, December of 93, 130 points. Not going to get there at 115 with 155 left to play. You sure? I'm feeling good about that one. <laughs> that one I'm feeling pretty confident about. Three threes, five threes, and they're in there. Harris with that last foul. His fifth. He's gone. Leaves with six points. So Boxley, Gilmore, Harris, Gweth, Broussard all fouling out tonight before Seattle U. Suggs at the line. He's got five for seven at the stripe tonight. He has 11 points. 
and six Huskies in double figures tonight. Well, if we look ahead, Huskies have Washington State coming in Saturday. Yep. Big game, big game for both of them as they're both coming off of losses on Saturday. But Washington State was able to get the split down in in Southern California as SC just collapsed in the second half and uh, WSU took full advantage of it. Reggie Moore playing great basketball, yep. playing just outstanding basketball for Washington State. So that's coming up next for the Washington schools. And then uh, Seattle U have three re teams in the region three teams coming up Idaho on Saturday and Eastern Washington on Monday and then at Portland State uh, on Saturday but a lot of road games with this uh, schedule and where they are as a program by the way the Husky Cougar game 1230 tip off on Saturday you can see it right here on FSN is Clay Thompson and Reggie Moore and Francis referred to really I mean I I would think Reggie's the odds on favorite right now for Pac-10 freshman of the year. I mean, he has been that good. Yeah, he or Derek Williams from Arizona. He's yeah. Derek Williams has been good too, but I think just because of the point guard responsibilities yep. that, that uh, Reggie has, he would be the favorite to, to win it. So we'll keep it in the state of Washington. To Suggs. And a foul as uh, Scott tried to get it back to Trent. And here he comes. I was wondering. Brandon. Brandon Shear, the people's choice, dog pack, loving it. And now the goal will be for this Husky team to get the young man some shots and try to get him his first points of the season. So he checks in, Suggs checks out. 127 left to play. You know, look, these guys, you know, the walk ons, the guys at the end of the bench don't get a lot of. Uh, Publicity or props or playing time for that matter. They work awfully hard. I mean, they are they are grinding, working as hard as anybody in practice. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have the reward. By the way, Alex Jones fouling out with six points. So that's now uh, six Red Hawks who fouled out of this game. Trent. Nice rotation on the foul shots. 119, 74 Huskies. Well, shake and bake move. Nicely done as he goes inside. Draws a foul on Shearer. And uh, just four players on the court for Seattle U. <laughs> yeah. Props to the truck for pointing it out. They, I mean, they've fouled out. So many players tonight. Now there is a player who I cannot identify in warm-ups on the bench, sitting at just to the right of Aaron Broussard from Broussard's left, our right, as we look across. And that may be Adam Eccles. Possibly. Maybe he doesn't have a jersey on him. I don't know. But it's five against four. I've never seen this firsthand. Take the shot. Sure. Right. Got it. <laughs> In transition, Trent, look out. That's that athleticism we talked about earlier. That's just a glimpse of what you're going to see from that young man going forward for the next three years. 123 76 Garcia. That thing I said about 130 by the way. Now, I'm not going to take it back. <laughs> but I think that'll be that. Lorenzo Romar says let's uh, let's just slow it down. Gaddy will dribble some of this clock out. It's about a eight second differential between game and shot clock. Dog pack uh, just loving it. Abdul Gaddy on his 18th birthday. And they will just take the shot clock violation. And here it is for Brendan Shear. Textbook. Turns, faces. Nicely shoots done. With confidence, finishes, thumb down, Swiss. First basket of the season, and that will be that at Bank of America Arena. Cameron Dollar. Lorenzo Romar embrace 
Brendan Shear receiving congratulations. As see Coach Dollar going through the Washington line. Guys, obviously, he knows tremendously well. Brendan Shear all smiles. Got the, got the little monkey off his back. Breaks through. First two points of the season. Good for him on this huge night for the Huskies. Season high 123 points. 123-76 over Seattle U. Fans, thanks for attending tonight's contest. We look forward to seeing you.